Hey everyone, today we're going to look at installing some veneer stone. This is a product from K2 Stone called Pacific Ashler Veneer. Beautiful product and a great place to start for someone that's just getting into installing veneer stone. In today's example, we're going to do a little mock-up of an interior feature wall. So we're going to take it back down to plywood, make sure that's secured to the wall really well, and then we're going to install some diamond mesh. Uh, this one has a building paper attached, and we're going to nail it in place. Uh, we always do two inch minimum overlap between pieces of mesh and building paper using one and three quarter inch galvanized nails. And we want a six inch vertical spacing and eight inch horizontal to make sure the whole thing is secured really well to the plywood. Some basic tools. Uh, for the scratch coat, which is where we're going to start, um, just a nice flat trowel and a little brush to put a finish on it. And we're using a Type S cement mixed with sand in a three to about one and a half ratio from sand to cement. Just mix it up in a bucket. Um, you just have to make sure that the consistency is right. So you want to add a little extra water if you need it, or you might find you add too much pretty quickly, um, but you want to make sure it's a nice creamy texture and that is going to stick really well. And we always set up a nice mud board, making sure it's already a little moist. And today we're featuring Joel Banner with Rocks and Stones Masonry, who's going to do our scratch coat here, and he's going to be installing our stone. Joel's been doing this a while, so he makes it look very easy. Um, it's a little tricky to start with, but really it's just a matter of getting the mix onto the wall with the trowel and uh, making sure that it's pressed into all the little um, pockets in the diamond mesh so that it has a nice even coat all over the surface. So you can see he's working from the bottom upwards and just applying each trowel upwards and pressing it onto the diamond mesh. And now he's using his pointed trowel just to finish off some of the more awkward spots, making sure everything is filled in really nice. And that there's a good amount of mud on the wall. Um, you just want to make sure that there's not so thin of a coat that you see the diamond mesh um, all the way through it. You want to make sure there's a little bit more than that on the surface. And now after that's done, he's just putting a simple brush texture on the surface. That'll really allow our stone to adhere to it. And once that dries, usually we wait a day and then we can start applying our stone. And now let's look at our stone setup. So we always like to lay out a bunch of stone, have another mix ready to go so we can start applying it. Um, at this point, we'll sort of lay out some pieces so we can pre-cut them and at least get the first row started. So we're using the IQ Power Tools dustless saw so once the first row is ready to go, we can start to apply some stone to the wall. So we're just going to trowel onto the back of the stone and just take a look at sort of the angle and how he's using the trowel to spread it on nice and clean and get an even consistent amount. We want to finish with about half an inch of mortar in between the stone and the scratch coat. So usually just a bit extra to sort of press the stone in place and squish a little bit out. And I'm just going to show you in a second here what it looks like with the stone removed. So you can really see what the bond um, on the back of the stone would look like. So when you squish it around, all that moisture and sort of the, the cement and stickiness um, attaches to the stone. And that's what a nice clean piece looks like, all traveled up, ready to go. So now we're just laying row by row, applying stone. We really want to make sure that just the vertical joints don't line up as much as possible and we're going to get into some cuts here. So if we're working up against a plywood or a piece of trim, um, you can simply just lay the pieces out, mark them with a pencil and cut and place. Uh, if your mortar gets a little bit dry throughout the day, you can add a little bit of water just to splash, remix it and continue on marking, cutting and placing. all the way to the top.
And as we get up to the top, you may have to rip the top row, um, depending on what you're working up to, whether it's the ceiling or, or what have you. Um, but really, you just want to make sure that all the pieces fit really nice, and any little gaps at this point, kind of finishing touches get filled in, little chips, or you could really take the time to cut it all really nice and tight, um, whatever suits your preference, and just give it a good clean, get rid of any dust residue. Um, that's another good point. If the stone is a little dirty when you're laying it, um, you might want to consider just sponging off the back of all the pieces too. And here's sort of the nice finished texture and what you can accomplish on a grander scale. Till next time.